Cincy today. I'm super excited to basically show you guys what um, I ordered for this channel uh, probably I want to say 11 12 days ago somewhere around that line. I've been kind of teasing in different videos and here we have it. Uh, this is the 1985 uh, Toyota 4Runner. Of course it's on the uh, Trail Finder 2 uh, chassis. It is the limited edition. Just basically means that it has been painted and all the detail stuff has been put on for you. There is some assembly, which we may not do in this video because it's probably going to be a long video for unboxing. So we'll probably unbox everything, show you everything in detail, and then do another video for setup. And of course, there will be crawling, modifying, you name it. We're gonna do it to this bad boy. So we'll give you a look at the box real quick. This is the box you get. There is a little bit of a scratch there and there. Uh, I hope it didn't, I don't think it damaged anything. Just gives you the address for the place where it comes from, California. They ship it from China, California, then California to here. Um, box 140 of 230. So they buy quite a few of these, I'm sure. Uh, that's about it, really. And then as far as the weight and stuff is, it says it's gross weight. Uh, 12.5 pounds, jeez, but that's probably the packaging and everything. Um, and, uh, comes with, of course, a uh, packing slip. Or if we won't drive, I'm not going to give you that order information. And in this packing slip was one of these, uh, thing of stickers. So, these are kind of cool. I have a bunch of these that so ordered uh, plenty of RC four-wheel drive stuff. So, let's get into the unboxing. So, I have not opened or messed with anything. Uh, I have not ever owned a RC four-wheel drive uh, crawler. I've had Axial. I've had other brands. Uh, Traxxas. Tons of other brands that have never had an RC four-wheel drive. Um, so, I'm kind of excited. I think that they taped it pretty nicely. Usually, I use a knife, but I figure I want to have this the thing so this is going to be the outer box oh the inner box is nice hopefully the inner box isn't damaged I like to keep the box for this officially licensed toyota so that's what that bad boy right there looks like very scaled detail even um um uh, appropriate uh decals for its time that looks exactly how it would of course just amazing scale detail limited edition like i said it's just been painted and kind of assembled. If you get that body, you have to hand paint everything yourself and add all the accessories. Officially, officially licensed is nice. We're gonna go ahead and just slide it right on out. Come on. No, you want to. Come on. There we go. So this box is thick. It did not penetrate. Or scratch on both sides. It did not penetrate. So the box is in mint condition. I could appreciate that. Um, you want a beat up box? Uh, it's not bad right there. No, it's in pretty good shape. So let's flip it over, kind of show you a little bit of the stuff that's on the outside, and then of course we'll get inside the box. So it just said the uh, limited 85 Toyota 4 runner, like I mentioned. Uh, wow, it's got the Yoda, uh, Yoda, Yota, Yoda, uh, two ultimate scale axles these are really really nice axles one of my favorites it's a single space so it is a r3 transmission ultimate scale shocks you can uh change out the springs in here or completely eliminate them if you like uh falcon uh wild peak mt's 1.7 tire so very scale realistic tires plus really good tires in general a lot of folks love them i've never personally had them but uh a lot of folks love them. Just gives you a little more detail. Ready to run 110 scale. True ready to run. Everything is included. 
please do not return to the store. Uh, there's a seal right there. A little where you can find all the information. Just gives it kind of like the, I like that feel, the look right there. Oh, there we go. So it shows the single speed transmission, the transfer cases, the axles, engine bay detail, charger, some other bits. In, oh, adapter for all types of plugs. That's cool. The, probably is, might have a US plug or might have all three. I don't know. Uh, just gives you a little bit of this, everything about the thing, which we'll go over. So it's actually numbered. So you can actually look up what's what. So it'll talk about the battery, the motor. What motor is it? Please don't be based between 45 and 55, hopefully. 45, one of the best numbers. I always thought about getting lower, but I think 45 to 55 are the two best you can get. Uh, not the really high torque. 540 crawler motor, big enough. Outcry 3 waterproof ESC. I can appreciate that. Six cell, 3000 million. Nikon battery is good enough and it's heavy. So it does have its purpose. Fully deep. So let's start from the top. Hold on, I'm starting in the middle. So it says four runner body set and tan. Realistic billet aluminum ladder and frame chassis. Ooh, R3. Single speed center mounted realistic Humber, Humber transfer case. The Yoda 2 uh, Ultimate Scale Cast Axles, the Twister High Torque Metal Gear Digital Servo. Appreciate that OEM Stamp Steel. Ooh, they're stamp steel wheels. That's really nice chrome. Uh, the Falcon Tires that we talked about, the Wild Peaks 1.7 MTs Tires, 540 Crawler Motor, 45 Turn is, I think, the sweet spot. Even, I mean, 25 isn't bad, but I think 45 to 55 is what you want for this particular model, in my opinion. Um... Everyone has their own opinion on that. Um, Outcry 3 waterproof ESC, 6 cell nickel cadmium, uh, nickel hydrate uh, battery pack, which is included, the nickel hydrate peak battery charger. So that's nice if you don't have a charger for that. The XR3 three channel transmitter receiver radio. So that's nice. It gives you an extra channel. So you probably have like a switch, like for a winch or lights or whatever. Fully detailed. 22 re engine bay so that's the motor that would normally come in these that's really cool R your rc adventure weights i'm not gonna read everything on it but yeah amazing so there are seals i think i'm gonna go this this way so i'm gonna turn it right here just so i can crack the seal for you guys uh like i said i'm not gonna assemble in this one because it's gonna be a long video we'll do another assembly and setup video and i'll show you what i'm gonna do different so if you guys are interested in that, please check that video out. It will be posted, I'm sure, right after this. And then, of course, we will do the initial, we'll do the first crawl and run video. I cannot wait to do that. I'm actually going to take this to like a 110 scale course. It deserves it. I'm not taking it in the back. I don't have anything for 110 scale in the back. I have something for my axial. That's about it. So you just want to just pull and slide it out. Don't be afraid to pull in the boxes. I don't care about the inner boxes. But basically, you're going to pull and slide this out. If you had someone to pull me square straight on the other side of the box, it would be easier. Make sure we don't have... Oh, we have more stuff in there. So there, this is two pieces. So we're going to push that right over about right here. There's more. But wait. There's more. We have a bag of stuff. We'll set that right there. Oh, this is a nice unboxing. Piece of foam just to... I need that for one of my planes. Uh, I make like the spacer for the batteries. I use that foam for the prizes as well. And what I'm guessing is a transmitter. So we'll kind of I'll leave this box in the background. Man, that's a really good looking truck. Uh, I like old school trucks. You know what? I like the, they made another edition truck. The, I want to say 87, the one Back to the Future truck. It's name, I'm terrible with names. Uh, the Back to the Future truck, they had one. And of course you had to paint it. Marty McFly. I can't believe I didn't think of that. So let's do the small stuff first, right? Let's do the accessory kit first. Why not? So, RC four wheel drive. Let's make some nice stuff. I tell you what, uh, I always loved their heavy construction equipment. And I knew they had RC crawlers, but I had Axial. I thought I was, you know, I thought I had the best setup, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had Axial, other brands. But I just never looked into the RC four-wheel drive crawler, and I'm kind of regretting that. But I do love their heavy equipment, and I do have some 
I do have some of their heavy equipment. I like to get more. I just bought, I just actually got some stuff. It was supposed to be part of this order, but they shipped different times. So in the package, look at that. Truly ready to run. RC four wheel drive brand batteries. Of course, alkaline, I would hope 1.5 volt. Oh, that's sweet. So they give you the batteries for the transmitter. Love that touch. It truly makes it ready to run. What else we got here? We have a nickel hydrate battery, which I will actually be using. This is plenty of power, 7.2 volts. It's plenty of power for those 45, T55, any of those, as long as it's not, you know, a brushless motor, you're good. Uh, this has plenty of power, has a lot of weight, which I like. Uh, XT60 is not a bad connector, so that's fine. Uh, so yeah, big old cells. I remember this pack used to be the bomb back in the day. Back when we watched the pipe, uh, we used to use a uh, pipe to build uh, outdoor tracks and we'd race behind pit row. So when you had one of these, you had some money, these high end packs back then, of course. And what else we got in here? I'm just reminiscing, man. The hobby has expanded exponentially. It's insane. Died and expanded. So I was right. You get all the adapters. So if I go to Europe, I can drive it. If I go to... Uh, and you'll play cells, let's see, you're, it looks like UK, and I want to say Asia slash um, uh, Australia. But the one we care about, is this the US one, or is the US one on it? Ha! The US one is on it, and then you adapt for the rest. So I like that. You don't have to mess with any of that. Uh, this is just a basic charger. What are we charging at? It's probably not a high-rate charger. Probably take a little while. But uh, no problem. At least it'll charge it. Oh, we're gonna do press it uh, to slide this out, right? Yep. So you can see it had the US plug plugged in. So we're good there. That's all we really care about. Let's set plastic to the side. So we, so far we got batteries, charger, and adapters. Not bad. But we're looking for something a little more interesting. There we go. This has to be. Yep, the transmitter. So, not the worst transmitter, but it's actually not bad either, I would say. Oh, look at that. They even detailed the, the rotor and the brake caliper. <laughs> uh, this would probably be, yep, this will be a three-way switch, which will be your channel three. What I do like, though, what most transmitters don't have like this, is this is going to allow you to adjust endpoints. Oh, man, that's a big one. Uh, learn from uh, RC four-wheel drive, guys. So other manufacturer endpoints are very important, especially for crawling, rock crawling, more important. So, so off and on switch here. Of course, you're gonna put install your AA batteries under here. Just pop, oh, I like that. I hate those slide ones. That's so easy to open. So you're gonna install your batteries in there, which we'll do in the setup. So we'll keep it moving. Let's see how that feels. You can definitely cannot do that one handed, not even close. So, oh, you know what? See how it's not. No, 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 like bouncing like the other ones. See how it just stopped? That's actually not bad for a, of course, um, ready to run outfit. So let's make some room here because it's going to get crazy. So let's slide everything over. And which one do you want to do? I don't know which one is the body, which one is the chassis. I'm sure they're separated, hence the building. Let's do, let's save the body for last. Let's do the chassis. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I'm gonna give you a snake peek. Mm. Man, it's gonna be a nice truck. I'm excited. I am honestly really, really excited. I always wanted one of these. This is gonna be my nicer one, so I'm not gonna be doing the shenanigans. I always do. I do some shenanigans with them. I really beat my, I don't beat it. I put it to the test, man. I don't baby everything I get. I really try to test it out for you guys to see what it can do, and a lot of it can hold up pretty well. I've had stuff break. But I was going a little too far. Uh, but I, I just want to see its quality, how it's made, how good it is. You know what I mean? You don't want to spend this kind of money. Now, this is not a cheap crawler at all. Of course, the body's uh, a good bit of that cost. You can buy cheaper ones. Uh, but to me, honestly, I'm not really good at painting. My wife is. I'm not good at painting and detailing and stuff. Even though I have a 3D printer, I have a little bit of advantage. I just... I may modify and learn to do more, but for now, I'm really confident in what they have done with this. I can add to this, but 
it just makes it so much easier uh, for us the way they do it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this component set out. And they made sure, I'm gonna say one thing, they made sure this does not get damaged in shipping. I will straight up say that. Look at that. Everything is so secure. Nothing is rattling, shaking, getting beat up in shipping. And I can appreciate that. So let's go ahead and separate the truck from everything else. We'll kind of put this stuff to the side. You know what? I'm keeping all this packaging just in case you never know. This is going to be something I'm going to keep. I can't keep all my RCs, but, um, you know, I keep them, run them, modify them, have fun with them, and then I sell them for a great price. Eventually, just the stuff that I can, I'll keep. But something this nice, it's not going anywhere, probably, to be honest with you. This is definitely going to be kept. So, let's look at, let's set this right here. Kind of with everything. Let's look at the accessory pack really quickly before we get a detailed look at the truck. Let's move on in here a little bit, sorry. And we'll go through the accessories. So, let's open this up. Uh, this, my friends, is a plastic bumper. I'm not too fond of plastic bumper. I'd rather do some kind of metal bumper from whoever you want to buy from. It doesn't matter. I love supporting hobby shops. There's RC Eliminator. There's a bunch of different hobby shops that you can order from. I would go with the metal one in a pinch. I guess you could throw this on just to keep the front of it from getting beat up on rocks. I get it. If you don't have anything or have the money to expand, but I would really invest in a nice front and metal bumper for this thing, uh, just because of how nice it is. This is not something you want to beat the crap out of the body. Excuse me, beat the crap out of the body. So this is a plastic bumper. We set that right here. What else we got in here? Ooh, some little accessories. So let's see what this one is. This one looks like some kind of piece for the bumper or body or something. Uh, maybe body mount or something. Or it looks like they're going post or something. I'm not 100% sure. Who knows? Something for like that. I'll probably be corrected in the manual, which I will correct myself when I assemble it. I just, like I said, I have not owned one of these. They're a little different. We do have a trusty battery strap. Nice to they give you that in case you change your battery out. Uh, I'm not sure how this one's even mounted, to be honest with you. Some more little pieces. It looks like a uh, jumper. Probably switched from nickel cadmium to lipo battery, if I had to guess. Uh, looks like 3x10 BHCs. Whatever that means for the, probably one for the bumper and one for the mount or body post or whatever. Um, uh, I'm not sure what kind of screws they're going to use to hold the body on either or grub screws. Uh, they did have like a glass one and they were breaking left and right. So I guess they went with the sticker, which is fine. It looks nice. It does reflect. So it's not bad look. Uh, I think they also went with like uh, rubber mirrors because everyone was tearing them off. <laughs> they couldn't keep them in stock. Not that it's funny, but you know, it, it happens. You're rock crawling. These things are gonna hit rocks. <laughs> you know, rocks are not kind to uh, plastic and other metals and stuff. So full list of parts. Uh, yes, showing you how to assemble that bumper I was talking about. Uh, you have to assemble a steering. Just kind of goes over everything, how to mount the body, how to use the uh, straps to hold the, to put in the battery. We'll go over that more better detail, but for now, man, this is nice. It's a nice manual too. That talks about that jumper I was talking to you guys about, it shows the ESC. Um, that is nice. Just everything, troubleshooting, uh, tips, uh, thread lock. Does recommend thread lock and other tools. Uh, very important, which we'll get into assembly. Thread lock is your best friend when it comes to rock crawlers. These things will literally just come apart on you. I promise you, especially larger scale that have more weight behind them. Uh, so let's look at the platform really quickly before we get into the body. We'll kind of shoot this stuff up here. So. This is their platform. Of course, you can see where the battery shaft's supposed to go. Battery mounts up here. Nice tray. Um, love that. Looks like the body would mount by four points here and here. It'll make it strong enough. That'll be enough. Probably some of those screws maybe for the body as well. Not 100% sure. There still could be bags over there. 
Uh, what else? Um, man, this is, I'm just seeing everything. So the frame rails are metal. These, uh, like little step slash protectors are plastic. You, they do have metal ones. Uh, you can see the little short shaft right here is metal. You can see the diff or the transfer, I'm sorry, transfer case. Uh, they do have, uh, uh, what do you call it? Overdrive gears you can buy and put in there. And of course, they have like a two-speed, you know, they have different transmissions as well. Like I said, this is the R3 single speed. Uh, man, just beautiful. It does have, is that metal? Yep, a metal uh, protection for the transfer case. You don't want that getting beat up. These are plastic. The couplers seem to be plastic. Mostly the axles are seem to be metal for the rear metal with maybe a plastic cover on this side and a maybe metal plastic cover. I don't know, not 100% sure on that. Seems to be decent quality. Uh, you can see some RC four wheel drive kind of stamps on there. Uh, you can see they ran the wires kind of neatly. I like that, zip tied, nice touch. There's the big old motor, the spur, the pinion. Looks like that's meshing nice, that feels good. You can see all the wheels nicely turning. See that? So that's working really nicely. Um, man, looking at these shocks. They got these little metal pieces right here. Hopefully they're metal. Yep. You can see the shocks. Oh, man, that's stiff. Oh. Now, I know they're leaf springs with shocks. <laughs> and hopefully they have oil in them. But they have a spring definitely in here. I can guarantee you that. And it is way too stiff you're not gonna get any flex like you're gonna go up and the wheel is just not gonna move i don't like that at all about it we're gonna be addressing that um uh maybe not in the initial setup but within the first or second video after that for sure uh we're gonna do a modification that's gonna help uh remove some of that stiffness out of this bad boy man that son of a gun is stiff i know the leaf springs will break in technically this won't a little bit, but the least things will break in. But I feel like they're still way too stiff. Um, what else? Oh, it's this piece right here for the bumper. See that? It's this piece right here that's in the bag. So maybe is that for the back? Yep. To mount the bumper. That's what that's for. Duh. I even said a bumper mount, but yeah. Or body mount is what I said, I think. I apologize. So that's for the, the front is installed because they use it to just zip tie and hold the steering. You're gonna have to connect the steering to the steering servo. You can see it's a big old servo, RC four wheel drive. I'm sure the servo is gonna be just fine. I guarantee you that. Uh, man, there's really a lot to look at. Let's look at the ESC really quickly. Basic, nothing too fancy. It does have a jumper and I guarantee, so one jumper is for LiPo or nickel cadmium, or nickel cadmium, nickel hydrate. Hydrite, whatever, hydrate, hydrite uh, battery. And the other one is for, I think, like 50% uh, drag brake, 100% drag brake. It's probably, hopefully, set on, imagine, drag brake. If not, I'll definitely be setting 100% drag brake. Uh, and I do want to use the nickel hydrate battery for now. I'm perfectly fine with that. I do have XT30 uh, batteries. I do have three cell, I do believe, but nothing too small. So I may look into batteries for this maybe later on. We'll see. There's some clips here. I don't know what these are for. To, for maybe, oh, just to hold this part on. Okay, I see it. Nah, that's fine. I'm not gonna be messing with any of that. You can actually take these steps, or you can actually take this piece off right here too. Uh, what else? Let's look at the wheels. Oh, that looks good. So this, you can see the little screws. It is a two piece. Uh, when you build these, that looks really nice. When you build these wheels, they feel good. Yes, they have foam in them. So the grip is absolutely exceptional for these tires. Man, they're really grippy. Nice foam in them. Seems like single stage. I doubt they put two stage foam in a single stage. So little screws to hold the basically two piece. It is stamped steel. So it's a really high quality wheel. Got some weight to it, of course. And then you can see the center lock. They do have the fancy like scale uh stuff for the wheels and stuff which we may get into uh, and that's really man that looks really really nice i'm not gonna lie i'm very very happy with the way it looks the only the only disappointing thing so far i'm not gonna lie to you guys is the stiffness but that can be addressed 
So, of course, not, uh, not, uh, last, but definitely not least. Oh, man, it's gonna be nice. The body. So, there's a little sneak peek. Of course, we'll just go ahead and cut this right here. And we're gonna try to be as gentle as possible with everything. I don't wanna tear this stuff. I kinda wanna keep all this stuff just to package it up if I have to, but uh yeah i plan on definitely keeping this this is gonna be one of those vehicles just like my really fancy excavator don't use it all the time but i do use it i really enjoy it and love it and i want to make it really nice uh, i am going to be doing more stuff to my excavator and kind of um, keep maintaining it better not maintaining it but doing more with it these there's little flaps that do have to come out there we go just like that, and then you just should open it. If you cut all the tape, there's still a little piece of tape down here. So I'm just gonna hold this up while I just cut this underneath here. Come on, there we go. So that is open now. Let's see, there is also foam protection here. So let's turn it this way. And we're gonna slide out the foam protection. Oh man, this is packaged nice. I kinda wanna put this stuff on that side. It goes with that box. Don't wanna mix it up. It's like in a tray, by the way. Oh man. So there's another piece of foam here. Let's slide that away. I mean, look at how that's packaged. That is insane how nice this is packaged. It is just minty. Let's pull the body up nicely. So all the hardware and everything you need, like I was right, some of those screws go to the bumper and some of them go for the body. So, Seemed like there would be more, another pack of screws somewhere, but maybe I'm wrong. So you can see they use this wrap. I really like this wrap. It really keeps everything nice and clean and nice. And the way they had it packaged, this is not gonna get damaged. Oh man, I don't even wanna peel this off, it's so nice. So let's go ahead and just slowly work this stuff off. Be careful if you try to rip this real hard, you can rip some stuff off if it gets caught. <laughs> Trust me, you can, You'd be surprised and you want to pay attention i will show you guys something pay attention when you open stuff you'd be surprised what they'll forget to do and it'll create damage so look at that i don't think that sticker is cut see that it doesn't look like it's cut so when you open and close this it's going to mess up the decal so you may have to cut that maybe heat it a little bit then cut it however you want to do it uh, very lightly, your friend the lighter. <laughs> and looks like it's not, maybe it is cut. No, it's not cut. So, I would definitely wanted to see that cut. The body is absolutely incredible. Oh my God, I'm not even gonna open the doors yet because I do need to address that because I don't want to tear my decal. So let's slowly show you the body. There's the gas cap. Look at the detail there. See the chrome handle, the doors open. These are rubber so they don't break when you bump up against the rocks, they just give. This hatch comes off, there's a roll bar under there. Hatch comes off, of course. Uh, the back tailgate opens the doors and the hood. So look at that detail. You can see these where the screws go to mount the body. Now you ready? Look at that. I wish that was black. Chrome is okay, but I wish it was black. It'll look a little better. In my opinion, kind of come with the scheme better. But look at those, look at those uh, ready for lights. You can see, you can just put your LEDs right up in there. Man, the lights look phenomenal on this day. Look at the little windshield wipers. Of course, the decals. I'll show you how to open the hood properly so you don't damage anything. Same with everything else. Wiper back here, Toyota. Look at that forerunner thing right there. EFI SR5. Ooh, that was a nice one. <laughs> we got, man, got no crappy. We got the top trim level here, boys. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited. So, let me back up a little more. Let's try to gently open the back. I think I'm opening doors last after I cut it. So, this back hatch, this back door should open like so. So, you should be able to get your nails under there and kind of. Uh, don't be afraid. Pull her on down. So the hinges, you can see the little pins and the hinges. See how that opens? I wish they would have done some black or something to break it up a little bit. 
I think I'm gonna do that, just at least for this. Maybe paint some more in interior detail. That just looks phenomenal, look how that closes. Nice firm, of course, I wish. Um, I mean, it's plastic, it's okay. It's not bad. Seats look good, it looks good in there. Like I said, it'd be nice to break it up with some black. Let me show you the good old motor. <laughs> the good old 22. So what you wanna do for the hood is find a place with your fingernail and you gotta almost kinda pull out and then pull up, right? Am I wrong for saying that? Yeah, pull out and then pull up. And then it'll stay open for you. Look, oh, come on, let's get some light in there, boys. Let's get some light in there. Come on, what are we doing here? Can I open more? I mean, I'm not mad at the amount of opening. I guess it's realistic. So it's kind of hard to get that shot. I may have to take it off the stand. Let me bring it more towards the light. Oh, boys, look at that. You got your master cylinder, your battery, your motor, your air filter, your radiator cap. Look at that. Can you imagine if you did some wiring detail on that? Look at that. Windshield wiper motors. Come on. Your little plate back there identifying it. Look at that. That is killer. Yes, you can go in there with a little touch up with a little brush and do even more detail. So remember, you go to, un to knock, knock it down. You want to go kind of in a little bit. It'd be nice if it was mounted something. It'd be a little easier. So let me set it down. So remember, you had to pull out to, to open it. And then it kind of pulls in and then closes. So you want to kind of push that one in. There we go. And then kind of push it in and then it closes. There we go. And then, of course, the doors. I don't have my razor blade. I'm going to take a chance here. Very carefully open. It doesn't look like it's cut. Might be hallucinating. I hope I'm wrong. Come on. I hope I'm wrong. It's magnetic, or it's really latchy, and I don't have no good nails. You wanna always grab by the door handle, but the thing is, it's like I don't have nails to really grab it. Ah, there we go. Maybe it was cut, maybe I was wrong. I heard some of the plastic, but I got lucky. That can be damaged and torn off mine. I got lucky. There was, looked like a part wasn't cut or maybe it was cut, maybe I'm blind. But that's something you wanna check for and be very, very careful with. So, you just gotta have confidence, open it, don't be scared. The door opens. And let's take a peek inside. I'm gonna have to get a light. I mean, look at that. You got the dash, the steering wheel, the seats, the shifters. One for four wheel drive, of course, one for the Manual gearbox, no other way. The gauges, just everything is so detailed, ready for a figure to go in there. Of course, the driver's side door. Let's go ahead and close this one. Listen. So satisfying. So, so satisfying. And then, of course, this side. I'm nervous because this one, does this one look like it's cut? Let's look it up on there. It may be. It's just so close, it's hard to tell. It looks like it's not, but it might be. So let's go ahead and grab the nail. That one was cut. The other one maybe had a little piece wanting to restick, but no, it's fine. Perfectly good. There's the driver's side. Oh, look at that steering wheel. Steering column. Look at the gauges. Hopefully, let's lean some light in here. Oh, let there be light. Look at the gauges and stuff. Oh, look at that. Where's the natural light when you need it? Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely, it's shining down. It needs to be shining from the side. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's open up that tailgate again. It will get easier as the more you open it. Oh, I mean, look at that. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and close that. It kind of latches. And then, of course, I think there's magnets. Let's listen. So satisfying. To take this off, there are screws, I'm sure. You have to access. Yep. There are screws. So you can see, I wish they would have had wheel or fin, wheel wells? Not fin, wheel wells. I wish they would have had wheel wells on the actual um, 
frame like the wheel was. You can buy them for it. I just wish they would have came with it. It would have made it look a lot more detailed scale wise. Let me get my fingers all over it. You can just kind of see the way it's laid out. Uh, there's plenty of room for everything. These screws, I'm sure, access. I forget what screws it is, but it will remove the back. I'm not removing it. I'm rocking it like this for now. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is hand painted, by the way. 100%. Uh, what's this? Hmm. What is this? Let's see here. Oh, that fell out. I did not see that. Apologize. There we go. Whoa. Ooh, bumper. The bump. Er, uh er. -uh. So this, my friends, is this for the front lip? That's for the front lip of the vehicle. See that right there? That right there is this. Oh, that's gonna get destroyed if I don't put on that out. <laughs> Some kind of bumper to protect it. These are three. Is that three? Did they give us actually give us an extra one? They did. That's not. That's unlikely. I'm glad they did that. So they didn't want this getting damaged. As you can see, it is hand painted nicely. So there isn't much really to set up, but I'm still gonna do it in another video. This is already at 35 minutes. It's gonna. And I kind of, once I set it up, I kind of want to show you a few things, some more stuff about it. So a bumper, this is the piece for the front to mount this. So these two go together. And then of course the battery straps for the battery. Of course, the reflective mirror you're gonna have to put on. Of course, uh, the jumper and then of course, uh, one I think is for the front bumper and then the other one is for the, not the front bumper, the other ones, ones are for, of course, this thing right here, like this has its own screws, but you have no screws for this. Oh, that has its, another piece in there. Pins, like little, little pop-in pins. I don't know how to figure it out. Probably for the front as well. So one of these is for the body. Probably these ones are for the body. I get one extra. And then these other two are probably for something. And then you can adjust it how far it sticks in. And then it has these little holes. So not bad. This would this is a very, very gonna be a very easy setup. Of course, I'm gonna read the instructions because I want to make sure I get everything right and set up properly. Uh so wow. Uh <laughs> this is an experience. This is literally an experience. You want to take your time and really look at everything and just check out every little detail about it. Uh, you'll find more and more stuff. You'll find more and more details on the body. It's just incredible. I think it's absolutely incredible. I love it. It's the model number. I'm just, I'm blown away. Uh, this is not bad. We'll probably get this bad boy on the charger. I am constantly going to use this. Like it's got weight to it is what I like. Because this is going to have to gain some weight to actually even use that suspension. Uh, like I said, there's going to have to be some things addressed about it. I like that I have everything zip tied. Uh, I don't know how many of these screws are Loctite. It wouldn't be a bad idea to go through and check them. Because it will literally fall apart on you on the trail. Uh, it even shows a picture of Loctite as some of the tools you'll need. So keep that in mind, please. Anything that goes into metal, Loctite it. I don't think it makes a difference for plastic. Could be wrong. Anything that screws into metal, you want a Loctite, uh, like the chassis and suspension and all through here and transfer, transfer case and everything. More the motors mounted, just anything that screws into metal. On this, you want to check. Oh, I didn't even talk about the receiver. It's the gas tank or receiver box. I apologize. Receiver box is in a gas tank. It's supposed to be waterproof. Everything's supposed to be, I think, waterproof on this. I think the, this is waterproof. Don't quote me 100%, but I think the, the uh, servo is waterproof. I think the ESE is waterproof. And I think the uh, box that holds the receiver is waterproof. Uh, obviously, if you just happen to splash with some water, it'll be fine. Obviously, you don't want to dunk it in a pool, but you get that. Take the grain of salt. After I'm done, if it's wet, I'll definitely, definitely dry this. Keep water out of it. Water will rust and corrode stuff. So you definitely don't want that to happen. 
Uh, what truly impressed me is the scale detail. Uh, I do like this. The the axles look really nice. It's supposed to be really really nice axles. Uh, I like the way this feels. Honestly, it feels really good when I turn the spur gear and the wheels. Uh, the stamped steel wheels look incredible. Uh, scale detail. I'm a little. The only dis disappointing thing I would honestly say is how stiff this is. Uh, it's already man. I tell you what, maybe it'll break in, but I think I have some modifications that's gonna help it further along because I want more than that. Uh, but it's already. I mean, you can wear that in. Those leaf springs will break in, and everything kind of will wear in and kind of break in. So, but uh, we're gonna do something to make it better. I'll do my own touches on it and. That's it, guys. So I think this is going to do it for this unboxing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everything I could say was packaged absolutely incredible. It is not cheap. You're looking at around $570 plus shipping, which is going to get you for a little bit there, too, depending where you live and everything. Uh, you know, currencies, all that fun jazz. Um, it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all, but it's just really nice. Is it the best? I don't know. Is it better than other crawlers? I don't know. I haven't compared it. I haven't drove it. I haven't ran it. Maybe the best crawler. Maybe an okay crawler with an amazing detail. I don't know yet. So that's all going to have to be uh, something that we're going to have to kind of discover and kind of find out our own. There are other videos out there you can check out as well, but for now uh stay tuned because there will be a lot more to come on this so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace